The Pacific Gyre is a slow-moving clockwise spiral of ocean currents. The Erie has given birth to a large mass of ever-accumulating trash, known as the Pacific Garbage Patch, floating between Hawaii and California. Scientists estimate its size to be twice that of Texas. This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Of course, anything that floats is going to wind its way into the gyres. The gyres are downhill from everywhere. So most of your debris that washes off our coastlines, and that can be lots of natural things, from seeds to logs, uh, coconuts, even bits of pumice. I've seen those in gyres. But there's also lots of anthropogenic, man-made materials that are heading out to sea, and it's mostly plastic. Marcus Erickson is the executive director of the Five Gyres Institute, dedicated to understanding plastic pollution through exploration, education, and action. As the organization's name indicates, there are five gyres, two in the northern hemisphere and three in the southern hemisphere. He says that in these gyres you may see a bottle or a fishing float or a tangled ball of netting. But most of what's out there are these little small fragments of microplastic, about the size of a pea to the size of a grain of dust. Those are microplastics, and they are pervasive around the world throughout all of the five subtropical gyres. And from an organism living in the ocean's perspective, this plastic looks just like the food they eat. When you think of the greatest migration of life on Earth, it isn't the wildebeest or, or the aerial migrations of birds. It's happening vertically in the oceans every night where you have this biomass that comes to the surface to feed on the buffet of life that's been growing under the sun all day long. And they'll, and they'll just, some animals will even feed blindly. If you look at jellyfish, for example, and barnacles, baleen whales will just grab big mouthfuls of food. And we're finding these microplastics inside their bodies. And the current science right now is trying to figure out, is there a transference of these chemicals from the plastic into the fish that consume that plastic? And if so, does it bioaccumulate? Does it end up on your dinner plate? Just how widespread are these bits of man-made plastic in the ocean? The oceans take up roughly two-thirds of the planet's surface, and the gyres take up roughly 40% of the oceans. If you look at the planet as a whole, the entire planet, the gyres are a quarter of our surface of this planet. And I've been through all five gyres. I've gone through the North Atlantic twice, the North Pacific four times and the other three gyres in the southern hemisphere, once each, in all of them, I found plastic in every sample. I could confidently say that a quarter of the planet's surface is peppered with these microplastic particles. And here's a great way to actually picture the density of this microplastic in the ocean. Imagine you fill your hand full of rice, two hands full. Now take that and spread it out over a football field. That's about as thick as it gets in the middle of the ocean. And that's kind of what we see around the world. Now, where we see it concentrated is on the, the shores of beaches. If you go to some beaches, you will see these microplastics washing ashore, especially on the windward side of islands in the gyres. And Marcus is hoping that we can reduce or eliminate the plastic that ends up in the ocean. The consumer has a choice to make, a CEO has a choice to make, and a, a policymaker has choices to make. But for the individual... It is not that difficult to make your life but 99% plastic-free. And with that goal in mind, there are many simple actions we can all take to reduce our use of plastic, such as using reusable coffee cups, bringing our own bags when we go shopping, and making informed choices when we buy packaged goods. Our thanks to Marcus Erickson of the Five Gyres Institute. We have a link to his organization on our website, thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.